It's smack bang in the middle of the week. Good night. Welcome. I'm Joel Villafana, and this is Halftime. Football is in crisis. The divisions among the stakeholders seems to be widening. Calls for accountability seemingly going on deaf ears. Financially, football facing the fire. Coaches, players crying out to be paid. Then there is the home of football being constructed as we speak. Where is the TTFA getting the money to build this facility? Tonight, we seek the answers from the horse's mouth. The president speaks. David John Williams has been silent until now. He is here tonight to face the music. It's David versus Goliath. Song the whistle. It's halftime on six. It's half time on six. So football is in crisis. More so, it seems a financial crisis. The criticisms of President David John Williams has been fast and fierce. David John Williams came into office in November 2015. It makes him a touch less than what, three years in the hot seat so far. How has he fared? He's been under fire, but as promised, for the first time on national television, David John Williams, the president of the TTFA, speaks tonight. It's David versus Goliath. And David John Williams will get a chance to address all his Goliaths tonight, because he has quite a few, from the board members, to the national coaches, to the players, the leagues, and all the stakeholders of the beautiful game. David John Williams is here tonight, and I want to thank him very much for taking the risk and coming out here to address the stakeholders for the first time on national television. David, welcome. Thank you. Good night, Joel. You Good night to your, your viewers. Yes. I'm happy to be here. I, 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 let me say I don't fully agree with your opening statements. No. Football is... Yes, maybe in a financial crisis, but football is being built from the ground up because we have never, we have always built our football foundation on sand. Uh, from where I sit, in my mm. perspective, we are building football foundation on good rock. So you, football is being built from the ground up now? Again, yes. Start from zero almost? Start from zero. Start from ground zero, so to speak. All right, I want, I want, to, I want to get to that. Okay. But I first want to get, David, you have been silent for quite a while. Maybe three years. Three years you've been silent? Very silent. Um, and, and, and the criticisms has been pouring in from all quarters. Why did you decide to speak out tonight? Well, first of all, Joel, um, I made a pledge when I came into office with the administration that I had that we don't wash our dirty linens in public. Uh, football needs support. Football needs corporate trainer to come back on board. And any time you have a lot of infighting and, and, and washing the dirty linens in public, corporate Trinidad and Tobago will shy away. There's no secret that Trinidad and Tobago football has always been in the media for all the wrong reasons. And you know, as president, I, I try to remain and steer away from that. But I think time has come where uh, some of the criticisms are unfair, uh, some of the statements are unjust, and it's about time I have a few words to say. Mm. So let's start with the financial crisis. You're agreeing that the game locally facing some financial challenges? I think the game locally is facing a huge challenge when it comes to the finances. Um, when we came into office, um, we inherited a debt close to $25 million. Um, we have managed to get it down by about $8 million. Um, let me put on record immediately that your funding that you get from CONCACAF and FIFA is not allowed to service debt. Um, so I think we have done tremendously well in reducing that debt by, by $8 million. Um, you know, there are only 
very few ways that you can get money in football as a national association. Either a government grant, grant from FIFA or CONCACAF, television revenue, ticket sales, and of course sponsorship. Those are the five main areas that you're going to get your income from, 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 from football. There's no secret the government had no money. Right? The first funding that we got, this administration got in a year and a half, almost two years, was the $400,000 for the women's program quite recently. So we've been managed to, to fight the battles without government funding. The FIFA forward program money goes only to specific projects, as well as the CONCACAF money as well. And sponsorship has not been forthcoming, as you can see. However, um, having said that, NLCB has come on board to, to support a national elite program for boys and girls. And that's what I mean that we're building from ground up. So the under 13s will go to under 14, the under 14 will go to under 15, and so on. So it's building from the ground up. And um, we want to thank NLCB um, for coming on board and, and, and buying into the vision of this administration when it comes to developing the game of football. When uh, you came into office, not cutting you, David, but when you came into office and you faced a $25 million debt, <laughs> Um, you've been in business, David, for, 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 for your, in, in your private life for, for, for many a year. When you came in and you faced a $25 million debt, what was the plan, what was the vision in terms of dealing with the business of the TTFA going forward? Well, well first of all, Joel, um, I like to put it in perspective. You know, I felt that as the president of the TTFA and the, the administration that I headed, we were placed in a very difficult situation because we effectively came like a receiver. Um, there's a lot of debt. Um, there was no money. The FIFA, for FIFA money was suspended. There were no financial statements. And it was a difficult situation. There were judgments against the, the FA. And there were outstanding money for quite a number of years, dating back to 2010. Um, so now we come into office in, you could say 10, 2016, November 2015. Mm -hmm. I mean, people have been waiting for money. And it has reached a stage where people were literally fed up, and and, and, and they had to deal with this. we had to deal with that situation, um, and we had to face this head on. Um, it's a job that um, I never aspired to be, but I was cajoled into doing it. Um, but I'm a person who don't shy away from from a fight or a challenge. Um, you never find a diamond close to the surface. You know, pressure makes diamonds, and and and, and I, I, I took up the challenge as president of the FA. Um, unfortunately, a lot of people have made the debt of the FA into a personal one, <laughs> David John Williams' debt, and, and unfortunately it's not that. Um, there's no secret that Russell Atterby was owed millions of dollars, Anton Coney millions of dollars, you know, and, and the list goes on. Um, millions of dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Russell, let's, 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 I mean, uh, uh, Russell Atterby and Anton Coney owed millions of dollars by the TFF, and that was what you faced Yes, of course. Entering office. And, and, and that does not that's, not... that's not... that's not... that's not over the last three years, you're talking. No, that's not over the last three years. Mm -hmm. um, Russell Atterby's debt uh, went back, I think, to 2010, when he was national coach, mm -hmm. and I think uh, it was ratified by Raymond Timkey, uh, the then president. Um, and then Anton Coley, that goes back to 2014, prior 2014. Um, so it's a lot of money. Multiple uh, millions of dollars. Yes, millions of dollars, men, yeah, millions of dollars. Millions of dollars. There were service providers who haven't been paid since 2010. As a matter of fact, there was a judgment against the, the, the FA to, to, to freeze the accounts of the FA for a, a, a debt that was dated back to 2010. Um, I don't want to call uh, the, the name of the company, but uh, the records are there to, to, and speaks for themselves. Um, and there are a number of coaches, a number of coaches who have not even been paid for the under-17, under-20 teams during uh, the period 2010 to 2015. Um, and there's a lot of debt. It's a lot of debt. Um, mm -hmm. To be quite honest, um, it's not a nice situation to deal with. Um, but we have managed, again, reduce the debt. Uh, we probably owe every hotel in town. <laughs> I'm just using that phrase. We probably owe every hotel in town. You owe quite a few hotels in town. I owe quite a few hotels in town. <laughs> Not David John will have yeah. the TDFA. And, and all this you would have faced on, on entering office. Yes, right? of course. On, on entering of course. office. Um, but, but my dad said, I think um, the people who, who we have owed, have, some of them have been very patient and mm -hmm. very understanding. Uh, it's a very difficult situation, Joel. I, 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 I do complain publicly about it, is, is what has been entrusted uh, as 
to me as president of the administration, which I had, and I have to deal with it. Right. You didn't run to the hills when you saw the $25 million <laughs> debt. You, 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 you face it head on. Yes. And, and, and basically what one of the opening statements you made was that football is now building from the ground up. Yes, of course. And, and, and Joel, it, permit me, I know it's your interview, it's your, it's your program, but permit me to, to put it in perspective. Mm -hmm. So there were no audited financial statements from 2008 straight up to 2015 when we came into office. Mm -hmm. The FIFA funding in those days was called the FIFA, um, the FAP, FIFA Assistant Program. That money was suspended because of lack of audited financial statements and all that stuff like that. So, so, so the therefore, FIFA, there was no FIFA funding so, line so was cut off. That was cut off. Mm -hmm. So we had no lifeline. Um, this was, on, I mean, this was under the last president, the last Ray, president, Raymond Timkey. It, it was cut off, mm -hmm. um, and. The f one of the first difficult situations we faced was that we m ran the risk of not participating in World Cup 2018 qualifying if we didn't pay a debt to Ivan Pellerud of 210,000 US dollars. We would not have been in the World Cup qualifiers. Yes. In February 2015, the TTFA was given a 120 day grace period to liquidate the debt of Ivan Pellerud or face the consequences. Fortunately, when we came into office, we, we bought some time. Um, we got the audited financial statements done within 90 days. The FIFA assistant program was kicked back in, and the very first check of $250,000 that the TTFA got, $210,000 went to pay Ivan Pellerud. So we got the money, but we don't have the money. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, that, 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 that is what we we started off with. Yeah. Um, if, if, if your memory serves you right, um, the very first week of us coming into office, what happened? There was a player strike. Do you remember that, Joel? I'm trying to. Yes, there yeah. was a player strike mm -hmm. um, because the players were not paid. The players were not paid. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, they weren't paid for five or six games, or mm -hmm. as the case may be. Uh, that's what we faced with. Fortunately, we managed to, to negotiate with them, get the money out. Um, get some money out to them and, 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 and we got the World Cup campaign back on, back on track. So it was a difficult time, it was mm -hmm. a baptism of fire and, and I must say um, without trying to, to beat ourselves on the chest, basically the three years have been about out in fires, finding solutions, managing a crisis and all that stuff like that. But I but think we have done relatively well. Okay, relatively well meaning that a $25 million debt you have reduced by $8 million. Relatively well? Relatively well. I mean, TTF, TTF well, is still in the hole. Yeah, debate, still in the hole. Um, but Joel, just think about it. Let's put it into perspective. Um, if we did not have to pay that debt, which we inherited, right, what $8 million or $9 million was done for our football programs, yet the TTFA has still been able to manage its football programs to some degree of satisfaction. On the 17th played, the women's on the 17, we funded our women's program to the extent of $3.7 million. Our national teams play on every FIFA window. Um, we're not picking money from the sky. We are being very creative mm -hmm. uh, to, 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 to do things. We have reduced certain leakages within the organization. I mean, I'm not afraid, the employees who on salaries we're getting match fees as players. Those are the things that we cut out. I mean, I am not well liked as a president for taking harsh measures um, in situations like that. I mean, we no longer pay for ice. We invested in an ice machine. We no longer pay for laundry. We invested in buying our own um, lawn, uh, washing machine and dryers at, 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 at the Art of Oldland Stadium. So money, I mean, when you think about an ice bill of $4,000, you have 11 national teams. And you had ice in your ice bill at ten thousand dollars a month, <laughs> or a laundry bill of eight or nine thousand dollars a month. That is ridiculous. That's money going out. So we took some measures to to change things, and and um, maybe we rub people the wrong way. Unfortunately, that is the situation that needed. That is the action that was needed to be taken in order to survive. Describe uh, describe, uh, describe the financial health of the TTFA three years into office after meeting a $25 million debt, where are we now financially? Because I'm, I'm imagining you're still bubbling and juggling a couple of things, but describe the financial health going forward into, in, 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 into the, you know, this next fiscal year. We have a serious cash flow problem. Yeah. Um, 
put it that way. We have a serious cash flow problem. Um, revenue has been difficult to raise. Um, you know, cash is the lifeblood of any organization, whether it's a company or, or, or an association. Um, we have tried as much as possible not to depend on the government subvention, and it's deliberate because we have to change our mindset of just going to get in handouts from government. We have to find creative ways of, of developing our own revenue. And when you come to the home of football, I will try to explain that. Um, FIFA, we have written to FIFA to try and help with our debt. Mm -hmm. FIFA has said um, they have to have third party verification, their money is not for debt, and all that stuff like that. We have reached out. Um, but we have managed to raise some revenue um, that has allowed us to reduce our debt and at the same time still pay our national coaches, um, still run some of our programs. We still owe national coaches money. We have our own debt that we have created as an administration, but we had to prioritize who we pay. Do we pay the court judgments? So something has to suffer. Mm -hmm. um, so difficult, it, difficult as it is, we try to make ends meet and, 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 and we are getting there slowly but surely. We are not out of the woods. I, I like to say the patient just about coming out of ICU. Mm -hmm. and, but I'm still on the high dependency world. David John Williams is speaking to us tonight. He is the president of the TTFA dealing with the financial crisis that is the football in TNT. When we come back, David John Williams and his administration is building a home for football despite being in financial crisis when we come back. David versus Goliath. David John Williams is here with us tonight on the Halftime Show. The TTFA is currently building a home for football. It has been a contentious issue. About a year ago, the government handed a deed of a lease for just about 17.5 acres of land in Coover. This land is in the vicinity of the National Aquatic and Cycling Centers. Work began on this home of football on February 14th this year. It is expected to be completed this month, apparently. That was the announcement made during our tour of the facility back in August. Let's take a look back. Nine months was the time duration given for the completion of the home of football. A tour of the western and eastern ends of the facility took place on Monday afternoon with FIFA's Director of Development for Africa and the Caribbean, Veron Monsenga Omba, in attendance. After the tour, Monsenga Omba stated why this project was important to FIFA. This will be the first project entirely financed by FIFA Forward Project. So this is important for him, for me, as Director of the Region. And it's also important for, for the entire region. And more good news from the Director of Development as you revealed that funds from the FIFA Forward Project are to continue in the next cycle 2019 to 2022 and that the TTFA accounts for the project are in order. No worry about that. Is this a business of FIFA to make sure that the money that he put for development is really put for development of football. Today, I can tell you today, with the audit that was conducted by FIFA, they are nothing to, nothing to blame to uh, Mr. David Williams and his executive. Minister of Sport Shamfa Kajo said this project will help with the development of the game in TNT and the region and will aid with a sport tourism thrust. Complementing the other facilities that we have here in this region of Coover, making Coover and this area a sport tourism hub. I think we have a long way to go as it relates to national sport development, football development, and I think that this project is one that FIFA ought to be proud of, that Trinidad and Tobago Football Association ought to be very proud of. And I can tell you that the government of Trinidad and Tobago, we are pleased to see that you would have done so much in so little time, and we look forward to the completion of this five-star project. President of the TTFA, David John Williams, intimated that there's more to come, saying this facility helps as a pathway to self-sufficiency. Vinod Narwani, TV6 Sport. All right, it is no doubt, and I just want to echo the Minister of Sport, I personally 
took a drive down to have a look at the facility and it is a five star project um, and, and, and it is one that I think football should be proud of and that's just my personal view but I want to go back to Mr. President. When you came into office you just told us Mr. President that you made a 25 million dollar <laughs> debt and you decided to build a home of football not David John Williams decided to build a home Where did the home of football idea the, come the from? The vision had been David John Williams' vision, but it was supported by the board of directors of the TTFA. Um, so I want to put in perspective for the national public to understand. Uh, under the current uh, FIFA um, president, he had changed the FIFA funding program to what we call the FIFA forward program. Now, in the past, under the FIFA assistant program, you used to get 250,000 US dollars a year. And then at, in your fourth year of the World Cup, you would have gotten a balloon payment, maybe 800,000 US or 900,000, depending on the success of the World Cup. Uh, the president of FIFA and the administration which he headed changed all that and had decided to give 1.2 million US dollars per year over a four years, in, in, per year on a four year cycle. $500,000 for your operational costs and similar $50,000 for special projects that can only be used for special projects. So what the TTFA did is they took the similar $50,000 for 2016, 2017 and 2018 and put it into the home of football. Uh, it's either you just sit back and say, listen, go Cappingham, we always want money. We have to find solutions to be creative and, f and raise our own money. We have to find ways of being self-sufficient. We have to find ways of not depending on the government. We have to find ways of not only depending on FIFA for, for, for funding. We have a number of programs, you know, football is bigger than all of us. And long after I leave office, football is going to be there. So let's go to the home of football. So we decided to build a home of football. Who, and that, who's we? The TTFA. Break it down for me. Was this David John Williams saying that, hey, we need a home of football? Did the board in its entirety Yes, agree? Joel Villafana, 100%. Unfortunately, I can't show you the board minute, but if you, if you come personally, I'll show you the board minute. The, the board agreed to build this home of football? Yes, the board agreed to build the home of football, and let me tell you why. The TTFA had to sign a contract of agreed objectives, and we had to supply the board minute that when the contract for agreed objective is signed, that the board supported it. So we had to send a contract for agreed objectives with FIFA. And you have that signed document. And we have that signed document. So let's go to the home of football. The TTFA didn't own a parrot on a stick since 1908. You know what I mean by a parrot on a stick? Eh? The TTFA never owned a parrot on a stick since 1988. 1908. 1908. <laughs> we don't know where to train. We don't know whether we're training at the Larigum Stadium, whether we're training at the Boland Stadium, whether we're training in the Baca Laventil, whether we're training in Uwe Grung. The first fundamental thing that you need to have is facilities for your national teams. That is probably the reason why we own every hotel in town. Because if you had a camp for your national team, the TTFA had been spending close to $4 million every year in camping for the national teams. Right? Mm -hmm. Whether it's a World Cup qualifying year, whether it's your, your under 17, whether it's your women's team, whether it's your. And this home of football, David. Caters for all that. Right? Uh, let also, me tell you includes, also includes a small hotel. A small hotel. Of, of, so, of, of 72 room hotel. 72 room. A 72 room hotel. Mm -hmm. So, let's put it into perspective, Joel. This is beyond football and this is beyond the TTFA. For example, the TTFA strategically place this hotel where it is. Mm -hmm. in, the hub, in the hub of, of, in of the sport. Hub of in activity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we expect the hotel to furnish our national teams and the surplus rooms that we're going to sell to sport. So for example, we are in talks with Cycling Federation at the moment um, to get now the velodrome UCI certified. The hotel forms a very important part of that. It's the same thing with swimming. You understand? There are 3,000 universities in the U.S. that are looking for places to come. We have sun, sea, and sun, and 28 degrees year-round temperature. Where are they looking to train? We have world-class facilities, 50-meter pool, diving pool. We have the Brian Lara Cricket Academy. 
and you heard the minister said sports tourism. No, David. So you, so you think? Yeah. You traveling from the Hyatt to go and train in the Atabolden Stadium or to go and train in Cycling Village? Yeah, yeah, yeah. People want facilities that are convenient. So if from the airport, you can train three times a day. You understand what I mean? People want facilities that they're easy access to, so that they can do their program. It sounds good to me, and it made it made sense to me because I saw the I had an opportunity to see the facility. So, so uh, unfortunately, the pictures that you are showing, yeah, it's. We more advanced. It's way more advanced. It's way more advanced. But however, this has been a contentious issue, David, and, and, and mainly because members of the board, you're saying the board, members of the board have been asking for accountability on social media and otherwise. David John Williams, uh, as far as I know, and I told him that at the top, he has been silent on this matter. A few weeks ago, right here on the halftime show, I wanted to listen to a former national captain and pro league coach now, Angus Eve, pleading for you, Mr. President, to just come out and silence the critics. Here's Angus Eve. If, if someone is attacking you to bring documentation in a meeting that you have nothing to hide to quell all of this nonsense that is going all around and damaging the reputation of our game, the, they call it the beautiful game, then for God's sake, bring it, give it, Show it to the board and, 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 and finish. Don't, let's don't put our egos there. When the football is bigger than any one man, it, there was presidents of, of TTFA before, there were presidents of FIFA before, there were presidents of, um, what, what look like doing? The, um, Super League. Super League before. There was presidents of everything, of the colleges league. And those people are not there anymore. He used to play. I used to play. I don't know what he used to, what he used to do play. I, I beat them all of us. But the point of the matter is that bring the papers. This is the contract. This is what we got from FIFA to build this home of football for Trinidad and Tobago football and end it. That was Angus Eve. First of all, let me tell you. There's, in the English language, there's singular and there's plural. Mm -hmm. You deduce from that. <laughs> your, your statements. Yeah. They're singular and plural. Singular and plural in terms of member and members. Right. Okay. So, so, so is, is it as one board member? Yes. Uh, any problem? Let me put it this way. I don't want to be drawn into controversy tonight, but I'll tell you this. We as a board have been trying to introduce a code of conduct because what is happening is that, first of all, the Constitution said the board meeting is not to be held in public. However, it seems that our board meeting is held in public. But David, and, 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 and let's be, so there is a confidentiality issue. Right. Right? And, but tell me. And uh, mind you, let me, let me just finish. The documents are available. We have asked for non-disclosures to be signed and code of conduct to be signed and it has re been refused to be signed. Right? How could you function as a board when information is being disseminated into the public wrongfully? And I give you two examples. I give because you've been silent. Well, it's time for me to talk. Is it that one board member among the board that is... is yes, it's a main protagonist, yes. Is it, is it one board member. Yes. The, rest of the, the rest of the board was in agreement with this Project? building of, of, of the home of the board? Joel Villafana, 100%. 100%. So it's one board member creating all the negatives around this. Yes. Have you, have you, have you sought to seek that one member out and say, listen to me, I am Joel, not spending a money. This is, Joel, I, I, it's fully FIFA funded. Based Joel, on Joel let me tell you this. David John Williams, administration, made a membership presentation earlier this year and a membership report which contained almost all the information that they were asking. Whether government was funded, that's one of the questions. The answer was no. no. Right. Whether we borrowing money, the answer was no. And this is in front of the entire board? board, board. The entire membership right. at the last AGM, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Where we were getting the funding from. It was public knowledge when we had the, the sudden in ceremony, and you can go back to the video, where the money was coming from. But in Trinidad, we, we forget very conveniently, mm -hmm. right? Everybody knows that it was the FIFA forward program money that is going to be used for football. 
how could you report in a newspaper that the home of football is going to cost 50 million and we have to borrow money to finish it? I will tell you this, Joel. So where those facts came from, David? Or I don't know. Joel, I don't know. But it was in the newspaper. I can assure you today that when the home of football is open, right, mm -hmm. it ain't costing 50 million. Tell me how much it's costing, though. It's going to cost you 18 million. 18? 18 million TT dollars. All based on, on, on the FIFA, FIFA funded program. And, and let me just, FIFA. yes, I want to, I want to, let me just, let me yes, just yes, that. I want to add, I want to add one thing to it. Mm -hmm. There are two projects going on right now mm -hmm. on that TT have. One is the home of football and the other one is the income generation project. And I want to explain the income generation project. Okay. Previous administration, FIFA had a program called Win-Win in, in, in CONCACAF and, and, and in FIFA, where FIFA was trying to make member associations more self-sufficient. So Trinidad and Tobago Football Association was the recipient of a grant of 500,000 US dollars to develop and become self-sustainable. They decided that they would have done online shopping, new website, uh, all that stuff like that. 350,000 US dollars was spent from that. Have we seen any income from that? No, there was $150,000 left. FIFA was suspending the entire thing because of the program had failed. I begged FIFA and I implored FIFA, let's give us the $150,000. We will try to do something with it. FIFA agreed, but they say you have to do the same project that was being done. I said, FIFA, no. Jerseys only sell if Trinidad is winning. Jerseys only sell every four years. That doesn't make any sense. So I persuaded FIFA to give us the money to build a sports bar and entertainment and small-sided gold fields and so on. Because Trinidad liked, liked the line. So it's built right outside the Atabolan Stadium. So when there's World Cup, when there's Gold Cup, there's going to be bar, entertainment, there's going to be small gold football. We build a beach soccer pitch there. And that's what we're doing with the money, to create revenue. So now we have a venue for entertainment for all the athletes that was going to come there, whether it's cycling, whether it's volleyball, whether it's basketball, whether it's swimming, whether it's football. So to add to the FIFA football program money of 750,000 by three, add 150,000 years. And that's what is costing the TTFA to build those two facilities. And not a cent of Trent Tobago's money, not a cent of government money. Not a cent of government You didn't money. have to borrow any money to build this facility. Had to borrow no money. Well, I'll tell you this. When this administration came into office, and go and check the balance sheets, the assets of the TTFA was $149,000. At the end of 2017, the assets of the TTFA is now $46 million. At the end of 2018, I won't say what the figure is, just wait and see. And that is based on the, the project and, this, and, and this project. potential earnings, because you value projects on the income potential that is able to generate. And you can ask any value to anything about it. David John Williams addressing the issues tonight in football. When we come back, we talk national teams and national coaches. It's half time on six. It's halftime on six tonight. The president of TTFA is speaking on the state of football. David John Williams is with me. Just before we go into national teams, David, I just want to take one minute, one minute just to deal with in football, as long as I have been covering this beautiful game here in TNT, we've had a godfather. And we know we not necessarily have to call names, but we've had a godfather where financially, if anything, football needed, don't worry. It would have been handled. You came with a $25 million debt, you stated. Do we still need a godfather? Because you said you got rid of $8 million. That means that there is another... But well, Joel, I, I, the book showing that... Do we need a financial but, godfather? But, but, but there are other claims that seem to be arising every day. So to go directly to your question, I would love TTFA to have another godfather and get rid of the debt. If you can see... 
get rid of debt, we'll be okay. Um, but having said that, I think that is virtually impossible. The TTFA has to buckle down, find ways of creating its own wealth, be creative in, in terms of being able to approach a bank um, to leverage against its assets because the TTFA is going into that sort of a mode based on what is happening with the home of football. We have to create a business model that is going to allow Trinidad and Tobago football to be self-sustainable. I am of the firm belief, and, and, and the business plan is going to show you shortly, where the TTFA is going to be able to stand on its own two feet um, and live off the money that is going to earn from its income generation projects, the FIFA grants, and if government wants to step in and say, give us a couple dollars, we are only too happy to do it. Football should not be depending on the state. But let me also say that we are very happy as, a, as, a, as, a, as an association and, 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 um, and I, by extension the Pro League, that government has supported the Pro League extensively over the past 10 to 15 years. Um, government has been very kind to the TTFA in allowing us to use the Atto Bolden Stadium of the home of football where we have the Super League office, the referees office, the secondary schools have an office, the TTFA have an office where you don't have to pay no rent. Um, we don't have to pay to use the stadium. Um, we have gotten prime land in the vicinity of the stadium. Uh, a lot of people ask how we managed to get it. It has been a tremendous fillip by the government of Trinidad and Tobago for the TTFA to achieve what we have achieved. Right. National teams and national coaches has been feeling the burn financially. Um, uh, let's just start with the women's program. I just want to start with the women's program before we, we, we talk because that has been on, is on the front burner, so to speak. Um, we saw issues with regards to the women's program where players taking to social media, uh, coaches not being able to be paid. Um, what, what's, what's the situation when national teams are concerned? And I suppose dealing first with this this women's team that, that are currently... Joel, I, I don't want to talk too much about the women's team until the tournament is finished, and I, I'll have a lot to say about it, except that um, the record speaks for itself. We have invested about $3.7, $3.8 million in the women's program, mm -hmm. and the figures are there to be audited and seen. It's unfortunate what um, had uh, appeared on social media. I think it's a bit unfair. Um, what was a bit unfair? To, for, to, uh, somebody to make a statement, is this worse than 2014? Well, I tell you, if it's worse than 2014, uh, I mean, it's really difficult to accept that. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say it, too much about it. it. If you follow the commentary on the games that the, 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 the ladies would have played in, um, I mean, as a, as a fan, David, it was almost embarrassing to hear. And, 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 I, tot and, 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 and I totally agree. And, and, and that's the, the the power of social media, and that's the downside of social media, because everybody has a voice on social media. Yeah. And if you look at mainstream media, mainstream media now is trying to cope with social media. Yes. If you notice, the, the, there's a, a, a shift into the type of headlines that appear in mainstream media. It's similar to what appears on social media. You know, for example, um, I recall an article uh, quite recently. Um, uh, TCFA Brace for Normalization Committee. But when you read the article, um, I read an article last week, TTFA, the next Petrotrin. Yes. <laughs> I mean, that's a big statement, oh, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, you agree uh, with that? Uh, or, 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 is, well, is, it that, is, it, is it that serious? <laughs> we are in serious financial crisis, but we are working our way out of it. So, are you the next Petrotrin? Do you agree with that? <laughs> <or not? laughs> the two big difference is you. Yeah. We don't employ 3,500. <laughs> <laughs> It's not that serious. So it's, not that serious it's not that serious, but, but it's very serious. It is very serious. Um, so, as I said, I, I will have much more to say about that mm -hmm. uh, after, the, after the program. Right. Um, so after so let, let's talk about how the national teams are coping as we speak. Um, we have, we have a, 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 a men's team heading off to Thailand, it is, I think, um, the next... The next they are in Thailand right now. They are in Thailand right, right. now. They're, they're reaching right there. So, 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 I mean, funding these national teams off to matches like this, paying the players, coaches, match appearance fees. How are these things being handled, David? You know, Joel, it's unfortunate. Eh? There's an old saying, good news do sell a good story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just the reality of the business. That's just reality of the business. <laughs> well, let's look at, 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 at the David John Williams administration mm -hmm. history of the national teams playing. We've played teams like Uruguay. We've played teams like Peru. We've played teams like China. We've played on every FIFA window 
that has been available to the TTFA. So we we now going. We just played UAE in Spain. Mm. Uh, we're going off to Thailand. As you you're see, racking up bills, division Williams. No, we're not racking up bills. Fortunately, the TTFA has been very skillful to negotiate all expenses paid, including match fees, including match fees. And I welcome any media to come and investigate all the contracts and the money that the TTFA has been able to generate from these matches. Unfortunately, the money goes to pay debt. Might I add, the national team at the moment have been very accommodating and realizing that we all in this together. When we came into office, we met a match fee structure of 1,500 US a game. I am saying now on national television that players in the men's senior national team are playing for 300 US dollars per game. And I want to tip my hat to them. We are managing revenue, we are cutting costs. There are certain aspects of the game that people are buying into. You know, and I want to give Dennis Lawrence credit for helping to achieve that. They have, we have moved from 1,500 US dollars a game, Joel Villafana. The men's national team are playing for 300 US dollars per game. And, and the games that we are playing are, are fully paid for. Hotel, by airline the, tickets, by the member association who we're going to pay. So Thailand paid for this whole trip? Whole trip. UAE paid for the whole trip. Iran is paying for the whole trip. How so? Who? Huh? How so? How so? Iran? How, 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 how? how, how Skillful how? negotiations. But there's an old Russian saying, he who moves quietest, moves the furthest. So you've been able to get our national teams to play on FIFA windows. Uruguay. With, 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 just with, with, with these countries fully funding, funding the, the bill. And it's unfortunate that we have not been able to showcase our national team um, more locally. And, and that's because we just do have the funding to do it. Right? Fortunately, we've been able to bring Panama here. We brought Jamaica here. We brought Barbados here. Um, but it will cost to bring, it will cost to bring them. First of all, yeah. you've got to put them in a hotel. Yeah. You've got to put your and national then, and team. You win, you win all the hotels and you win all the hotels in Tongue. So it's going to, for, for example, um, in Panama, we, yeah. we, we were very skillful to negotiate the fact that Panama, as a result of them qualifying for the World Cup, they had some funds. So all we had to do for Panama here when they came to play us here was to fit a, a food bill of about $5,000. US um, So we have yeah. been f striking you know, good alliances. I uh, uh, manage my time. And, uh, and, and, and we wanted two or three shows for us to talk about. <laughs> Let's take a short break. Uh, we're coming back. David John Williams is here. He's speaking on the state of football in TNT. Back. It's half time on six. Remember, if you missed any episode, feel free to check out the TV6 website, tv6tnt.com, and you can catch the repeat of the show on Thursdays at 10 a.m. David has been addressing the Goliaths tonight on the show. Uh, just before we hit the, another Goliath, which is club football, I want to deal with the Goliath that is national coaches, Russell Atapi and your technical director, Anton Corney. They have been so far two of the more uh, vociferous in terms of voicing their opinions, in terms of monies being owed. You mentioned at the top of the show uh, that it's millions of dollars owed to these gentlemen that you were faced with. Have Russell Atapi been paid? Um, are, are yes, we, we, we have made, we have made um, a significant amount of money uh, payment to these two gentlemen. Um, maybe not what they have expected. Mm -hmm. um, and let me go on record to say that anybody who is owed money deserves to be paid. But the situation does not allow us to pay the money as they would like it. Millions of dollars. I mean, just think about owing one employee over three million dollars, and think about one another employee seven million dollars. That's uh, that's 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 about the figures. That's about the figures. Wow. If, if you if you understand what I mean, um, it's a difficult situation, um, and and I cannot be against any individual, whether it's Anton Corny, Russell Latapi, Joel Villafan, or anybody, to 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 is taking a claim for their money and demanding their money and, 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 and voicing their concerns and being upset about it. Um, 
that's the harsh reality of the situation. Have we been able to address any part? Yes, we have been able to address part of it, and, mm -hmm. and I could go on record that we have made, um, in the circumstances and the cash flow that the TTFA has, I think we have, I, have, I can say we have made a significant dent when I use, I put into the context, mm -hmm. but in terms of the value of the money, it may not have been significant. Maybe, maybe a drop in the bucket. Maybe a drop in the bucket as, 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 as they're concerned. All right, another Goliath uh, that David has been dealing with is uh, the club football structure. The main contributors, uh, the Pro League and the Super League. Um, and, and here's just a flashback of the views of the Super League president, Keith Lecloy, on the state of the current structure of club football in TNT. Both leagues need to go away. Both leagues need to be put in the dustbin of history. What we need in this country is one elite national league that unites the entire country. Pro League is not in Tobago, yes? In which we have a multi-layered league in which we have several divisions where people find a place in the respective division on the basis of football merit. That's Keith Lucloy, your good friend David John Williams. <laughs> Everybody in football is my friend. I, let me, let me, I mean, Keith made that statement when the season was just about starting. Mm -hmm. Let me know the TTFA is under your administration, your vision for club football. We have the Pro League here, we have the Super League here. They're doing their thing. What's your, what's, what's your vision for club football? I want to go on record tonight, Joel Villafana, and say to the Trinidad and Tobago public that since the professional football came into Trinidad and Tobago, we have failed to qualify for the Hex only once. Mm -hmm. Since the Pro League has been established. Since professional football mm. has come to Trinidad and Tobago. The second thing I want to say is that CONCACAF and everywhere in the world is saying that professional football is the way to go. How can we compete with Mexico, USA, Canada, who have now formed a professional league, Costa Rica, Honduras, El Salvador, Guatemala, and that's not our immediate competition. Our immediate competition is the world. So we can find ourselves playing against Brazil, Argentina, Iran, all over the world. China, they're developing a professional league. Everywhere in the world is going professional. Athletics. Can we afford Hold on. to go? Athletics. I, I, I mean, I, it's I no longer amateur. Right. I think we've got it's that professional. Point. Right. Right. UEFA. Has it worked here, though? It has worked to some extent, mm. and I think the problem in, in, in the football here is that it is severely undercapitalized and there's a lack of sponsorship, okay? Mm -hmm. It is a lack of sponsorship. There is need for community fields where we can bring people back to the games, where they can walk to games. When you have people in a stadium, it brings billboards. When you have people in the stadium, it brings television. When you have people in a stadium, it brings vendors. When it, so the money starts to flow. Professional football has to remain. I go on record, UEFA has been here twice and it has been deliberate because CONCACAF have afforded to two to four countries. If you do your research, Trinidad and Tobago, Dominican Republic, Jamaica and Suriname are the only four countries in the Caribbean who can play for a qualifying spot in the CONCACAF Champions League. That is the reason because we have a professional league, there's club licensing, which is a minimum requirement, and that is the way they're going. If you're not club licensed, club licensing has been in, in Europe 10, 15 years. Yeah. Give me we are behind the eight, on the eight ball. Give me a view on the Super League very quickly. I think the Super League has an important role to play mm -hmm. um, in, 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 in Trinidad and Tobago football. I would like to see promotion and relegation, right? The problem that we see in the Super League that is the clubs do not have the financial wear at all to, to step up to, to the Pro League. Um, so we have to find a way to recapitalize the Pro League, recapitalize the Super League, get that promotion and relegation going, um, maybe have a 15-team professional league and then have a second division of maybe 12 teams. I think the English model is very important. We have to pay attention to the zones. Maybe the time has come for zones to be purely youth, to, to feed into these teams. We know that there's a lot of discussion to take place, but I think in general, we have to look at recapitalizing these league, getting the funding available, putting key 
people to run these clubs who know how to do these things, uh, put in key people in these zones. I think these zones should have full-time people. Uh, they, they should have a general secretary that is paid full-time and accept this voluntary thing. Football is big business. David John Williams will give his final thoughts when we come back. Final word, David John Williams. I just want to say that um, in this country, um, a lot of people, the success of an administration is how many tournaments you win and how much you qualify for. Um, this administration, the success of the administration will be measured in four to five years' time where you see the benefits of the home of football. I didn't get the opportunity to talk about our new flagship team, our under 14 boys, under 13 girls, and um, anytime they are playing in Trinidad and Tobago, get a ringside seat and you'll see where the future of Fernando football is. David John Williams, thank you very much. Song the whistle, half time is over. Funny old time flies over. <laughs>